Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Um, this week's video is about uh, a piece of cherry that uh, was given to me, cut into a bowl round of four or five inches thick and uh, ten inches uh, wide. The bowl after its turning was significantly smaller of course, um, but um, this is how it turned out. Um, as you can see, I wanted to do some uh, texturing and, in, and also uh, a little bit of spray painting and embellishment. Um, so I'm just getting a little bit closer on the camera here. You can, uh, it's been highlighted with uh, some friction burns here with the wire. Um, the inside of the bowl came out uh, really, really nice. Shape's good. Um, taking a foot off the bottom, but the old badge on there. Um, but as you see, we're going to turn around there slowly. Um, we'll talk about how the texturing is done, how the wire burning is done, and um, you know, generally how the whole bowl was made. So sit back, watch, and um, I'll tell you how it goes. I'm looking forward to this one. So um, cheers, guys. Here is the, <coughs> the bowl blank um, sitting on the layer they used a face plate on, on the rear of this one. And uh, starting off with the 5 8 bowl gouge just to uh, take the roughness on the edge and uh, to get a, a workable bowl. The shape I was going for was um, kind of, um, you know, curved on the outside, uh, symmetric in the, uh, the, the bottom to the top in terms of the curve. Um, but leaving it reasonably flat towards the edge so that uh, I can get some texturing in. And I wanted that texture area to be raised by about an eighth of an inch. Um, as you can see here in the, uh, uh, in the video now, I'm using the Simon Hope's um, large scrapers. There's two of these. There's a circular one and a square one. I'm using the square one on the outside. Uh, it did get it smoother. Still a bit of tear out. Cherry is a bugger for that, so it's... Um, it's quite hard to um, sort of make it a smooth surface, but uh, with the sanding pads coming in afterwards, took it out to a reasonable um, look. This is a texturing tool, another Simon Harp. Uh, it's called the Mini Texture. The wheels are bearing and um, have uh, cutting teeth, which uh, if you put it on a 45 degree angle like I'm using now, moving it backwards and forwards, um, and then twisting it over towards the end there, it leaves some um, quite a an, a an indent. But you do get some feathering going on uh, where the grains, um, you know, it's a, a tear out on the grain. Um, I'll use a um, a little bit of light sandpaper and uh, also a brass brush uh, moving over it, and it does sort of clean it up quite well. In the video now, I see some uh, painter's tape going on. Um, what the uh, aim of the game here is to use um, a black uh, dye, intrinsic dye, um, to highlight uh, the background in the uh, texture. The finish is all being done on the actual bowl itself. Just covering that up so that the uh, spray paint doesn't go over that. I just use an airbrush here, running around about 30 psi, and uh, pour the intrinsic. Uh, uh, black dye straight into the uh, airbrushing cup. Took it a little easy for the beginning, but then just went pretty wild. Uh, made it awful in the areas you see there in the video. For your viewing pleasure, I have sped some of these uh, segments up, so I know it's to bore, but the 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 actual video itself, you can see what's going on. I'm using a uh, a parting tool just to take the edge off the the uh, texture area and uh, create that eighth of an inch indent in the bowl as it is now. Then I come in with the uh, Three eighths, uh, sorry, the half inch bowl gouge, um, 
with the uh, thumbnail um, cut uh, to uh, remove the material uh, up to the depth of this uh, parting tool, which is about an eighth of an inch, as I said. It's uh, got to be really careful so that the uh, the bowl garage doesn't catch and run across the face because you'd have to, you'd have to start all over again. But um, it's just light cuts and uh, you, you get the job done. Uh, the tear out does eventually get itself removed. You can see there, bowl gouge is skipping quite a bit. Um, I eventually come in with the uh, Simon Hope scraper just to neaten it up at the, at the uh, finish. Going with the sandpaper, and just after the sandpaper, I just lost a short segment of the video. Um, was the dabbing on with the uh, shop paper towel um, of the gold embellishment that's over that black um, spray paint? It's just put it on lightly. Don't uh, rub it on. Just dab it on, and um, I left it uh, overnight to dry, and then gave the uh, whole bowl a, a, a finish of. Um, Really, just the axe um, paste, uh, uh, the axe polish, and um, finally with uh, just a few um, coats of um, clear varnish. Came out well. It was about here that uh, the embellishments were put on to get the dust out of the uh, texture. the video now I've got uh, some uh, sanding sealer I always use this on my pieces it uh, kind of locks the grain and um, you know prevents uh, any uh, further degradation in the um, in the grains tear out too it does help a lot uh, filling up the very very small voids and cracks in the bowl so that when the finishes do go on um, you know, they're not soaked up in, in the uh, the cracks of grains, so the uh, sanding sealer does the job for it. The final um, stage, of course, is the uh, the hollowing out of the, the bowl. I just took out some of the material with the with the forstner bit, um, and to set the depth gives it a bit of a guide. A tool I use for taking out the hollowing of bowls um, <coughs> is the uh, Hunter Tools. Uh, um, there is a name for it, the Hercules, they, they call it. Um, it. It's a carbide cupped bit, and you can see, even though this video is sped up, it really hogs out that material super fast. And that's another reason for using the Forstner bit, so you don't have to get right into the center and, and uh, you know, have bogged down with the little nubs that you continue to create from, um, you know, hogging out the material. But this thing goes crazily wild in taking out the material just like uh, cutting through butter um, you know definitely use a um, butter feeder um, bowl gouge uh, to smooth the, the texture up at the end um, because this particular tool really is for taking material out only it's not a finishing tool um, well in my, my opinion um, it, it is uh, said to be that but um, never get a, a, as a good a finish as if you're doing it with a bowl gouge. You can see there now it's just giving the sweat back, filling, stopping and starting, making sure the depth is there. 
I leave quite a bit of material on the bottom of my bowls just so that um, it kind of gives it a little bit of weight for it. Um, I don't like going to the very thin uh, walled bowls, particularly if the wood's still got moisture, and then he always goes oval. Um, cracks are eliminated by the finishes that I, I use here, and there is a lot of drying in the material anyway, so it's going to be um, pretty well uh, crack free. Touch wood, excuse the pun, but you know, at the end of the day, um, it is what it is. You've just got to um, decide which way you want to go thin walls and super dry material or just leave it to a little bit of moisture and uh, seal off the surfaces from the outside atmosphere. In with the Simon Hope Scraper, um, the finishing tool. I kind of like these, um, they do give the surface a nice finish, but again, the only way to get a nice super finish is the 40-40 uh, uh, um, bowl gouge with the heel of the bowl gouge itself uh, cut back, so you kind of got two bevels on the bottom. Um, that certainly does give it a nice finish if you take uh, very, very small um, and shallow cuts. And with the final sanding, it usually goes through to um, 240 or 320 grit. I think I went through to 320 on this one. And uh, as I say, the finish is uh, axe paste, um, axe polish, and um, a few coats of, um, of polyurethane. It's getting close to the end of the video now. Really enjoyed um, doing this one again. Um, thanks very much for your company, and um, more videos coming. Still shots are, are to follow, guys. I did forget. Cheers. <laughs>